NASA engineers have designed and built some amazing telescopes, satellites, and space probes, looking out to the far regions of the Milky Way and the universe. But some of the most important things they monitor are right here. Looking back at us from space, NASA's Earth Observing System is helping to preserve our world's natural resources. Find out how, next on Real World. NASA's Earth Observing System plays an important role in the recovery efforts of a vital ecosystem, the Chesapeake Bay. The Chesapeake is an estuary, a partially enclosed body of water where fresh water mixes with the salt water of the sea. The Chesapeake Bay is the largest estuary in the U.S., stretching more than 300 kilometers from the top of Maryland to the Atlantic Ocean in Virginia. It holds about 57 trillion liters of water and is the home of more than 3,600 species of wildlife. But human impact has changed the bay and it isn't as healthy as it once was. To better understand those changes, bay managers monitor the Chesapeake and that's where NASA helps. The agency is using satellites like Landsat, MODIS and SeaWIFS to keep an eye on the bay, collecting data that scientists use to monitor its conditions. Scientists analyze the data to understand the changes and predict what might happen in the future. We monitor the satellite data over time to see how things are changing. Eric Brown de Colston is an associate research scientist with the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. He works at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. We have to develop a, a big a mosaic of the Chesapeake Bay watershed from Landsat. So we take 22 different images that we have to stitch them together, if you will and that's kind of the base data. Four centuries of population growth have crippled the bay, harming water quality and threatening the species that rely on clean water for survival. About half of the water in the Chesapeake Bay comes from the Atlantic Ocean. The other half drains into the bay from its enormous watershed, a 165,000 square kilometer area that covers parts of six states. This image was put together by hundreds of different images of, of Landsat. We're trying to put together a mosaic of this whole region over time. Most of the pollutants in the bay come from the watershed. The watershed acts like a huge funnel, collecting water from rain or snow melt. Some of the water soaks into the ground. Some becomes runoff that collects contaminants as it drains downhill into the waterways that feed the bay. Watershed runoff carries pollutants from farms, suburban lawns, and wastewater treatment plants into five major rivers and eventually into the bay itself. Eric studies the land cover in this region. Land cover is the physical material at the surface of the earth. Land cover like marsh and forest is good for the bay. It acts as a filter, holding the pollutants away from the water. Land cover like pavement creates problems. The built-up surface can increase the strength of runoff into the streams, as well as add pollutants. Polluted runoff from the Chesapeake Bay's watershed causes eutrophication. Eutrophication is a process that ultimately diminishes oxygen levels in the water. Jackie Harmon is a Virginia Oyster Restoration Specialist for the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. What happens is we have excessive algae blooms that are generally fueled by nitrogen that comes into the bay. Uh, nitrogen a lot of times is used as a fertilizer on the land and it does the same thing in the water that it does on the land. It makes plants grow and the specific plant that um, it really fuels growth for in the bay is algae. So the algae consume the nitrogen, grow and eventually die. The decomposition process consumes oxygen in the water. That's a major issue because the oxygen that the bacteria in the decomposition process are using is the same oxygen that the fish and the crabs and the oysters need to live. Water with a low concentration of dissolved oxygen is called hypoxic. And hypoxic water is not a good environment for wildlife. So it makes it very difficult for other animals to survive in areas where there's low oxygen and ultimately it becomes referred to as a dead zone. And the delicate ecosystem of the bay is changed. But with images from NASA satellites, scientists and policymakers can identify land cover and changes in land cover that contribute to runoff into the bay. NASA, along with the U.S. Geological Survey, manages the Landsat satellite. 
Landsat records pixels, small pieces of the Earth's surface just 30 meters by 30 meters. When put together, give an overall view of the bay. Scientists locate individual pixels based on coordinates and latitude longitude. Images can be put together in a grid or a coordinate system like you might find on a road map. Scientists can compare the same pixels over time to measure changes in that particular area. There's another example for Washington, D.C. So you see Rock Creek Park, Greenbelt Park. You see the mall, I guess Haynes Point, uh, Andrews Air Force Base, so you can actually see the runways. And so what they've done is they've actually tracked this over time and see where things, where the urbanization is going as well. This and other information from NASA satellites help Chesapeake Bay managers enact policies in very geographically specific locations to reduce toxic pollution and improve water quality. Both Maryland and Virginia use data collected by Landsat to prioritize land conservation actions. And the effect? Well, there's a long way to go. The Chesapeake Bay Foundation has been measuring the health of the bay since 1998. Each year, officials grade the bay on a 100-point scale. A score of 100 would equal the pristine state of the Chesapeake, as Captain John Smith explored it upon arriving in the New World in the 1600s. The numbers correlate to a letter grade, and while the scale's a little different, it's not unlike the grade you might receive on a math or science test. For the last few years, the bay received a 28, a D. Overall, the bay is pretty sick. It's, it's, not, it's not saved. Um, we, we know how to do it. It's going to take a lot of action on the land as well as things done in the water like active restoration. Um, but but we're, we still have a ways to go. The foundation has set a goal of reducing the amount of nitrogen pollution entering the bay by more than half to 50 million kilograms per year. That would be a huge step towards getting the bay removed from the nation's dirty water list. So while the path to a healthier, more productive Chesapeake Bay is still long, NASA and its partners through satellite missions like Landsat and SeaWith are helping to make that journey possible. Listen all y'all what I'm about to say. It's time we get together to save this bay with a creature that's been around for thousands of millennia. It goes by the name Crassostria virginica. Some people eat them. The bay really need them. They're chilling underwater as they're filter feeding. There are so many cool things oysters do. The reefs are habitat for an underwater zoo with gobies, linnies, oyster toad fish, crabs and eels and worms and shrimp. You say you have a hard time believing this? You can trust me, I'm a specialist. Go and spread this message all across the nation that a funky new science called oyster restoration.